speaker today is Larry Jennings. Larry has been one of our pastors here at the fellowship for many years, and in fact, he currently serves as chair of the pastoral council. In his other life, Larry is a funeral director, and I would venture to say he may be the best ever funeral director, because not only is he fully professional, but he shares his own spiritual gifts with his clients at their time of greatest need. For example, he usually uh, consults with the departed soul to ask whether they have any particular concerns or requests regarding the service. Larry is also very adept at communicating with the elementals, the nature spirits, fairies, brownies, and so on. And for many years, he's been a devotee of the people we call the Ascended Masters. I'm tempted to say it takes one to know one, but Larry would probably repudiate that idea. Of course, that's what any Ascended Master would do. Well, please welcome our own Larry Jennings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, today I'm going to give you a break from talking about death. <laughs> I'm going to talk about family today. Um, July 1st, um, my grandson, Nolan Dean, was born. And naturally, it started me to think about family and the many pathways that have led me to this place and time. Nolan is my 16th grandchild, and I believe the last. Now I'll have to wait for the next generation to arrive, hopefully a long, long time from now. My grandchildren range from 16 years old um, to this newborn baby. These children do and will continue to bring great joy into my life and my wife Sharon. When I reflect on how I got to this point, I often tell the story of how Sharon and I met. I think I told it here once before. She was a nurse and I was an orderly and was called to her floor for a south to move a very large patient um, from a chair back into bed. We both fell into bed together. <laughs> and therefore I tell everyone that I met my wife in bed. <laughs> After Nolan was born, later that evening, we went back home and as everyone was settling down and going to the bed, I found the house getting quiet. And I asked myself, as I do every night, what am I grateful for? Family immediately came into my mind, and as I did, I decided to meditate on this before I went to sleep. Meditation has always been a natural part of my life, and I quickly allowed myself to slip away into a peaceful state. I thought of Nolan, I thought of my wife, my children, my grandchildren, and soon all my thoughts left me and I could feel myself going within and closing off the world around me. I then saw a circle before me, and today I want to tell you about what I saw in that circle and what it means to me. The circle I saw reminds me of a bubble in motion. It changed shape, it was fluctuating, as it appeared to move around without any real direction. Surrounding it was darkness, and I could see through this circle. It reminded me of what some would say is a portal. I could sense it was a space that somehow connected me to any place I choose to go. Looking into it, I saw flashes of light in different colors, and it continued to change with every breath I took. As I continued to experience the circle, Faces appeared within it, the faces of my grandchildren, my wife, my mother, and brothers would come to the surface, and then they would fade away. As I continued to watch in amazement, I saw the face of my father within the circle. He nodded at me, and then he disappeared. My father passed away seven years ago. And it was in this moment that I began to realize that my circle also included those who had crossed over. The memories of my father flooded back to me, and I felt closer to him. 
Seeing him in the circle reminded me of when I had my first reading. He was at that time having some serious medical problems and we were wondering how long he would be with us or if he would be taken soon. I asked Reverend Bev from Lilydale this question and she took a moment and reflected upon it. And then she told me she was being visited by five spirits, all named Walter. They were enjoying the company. She was enjoying their company as they laughed and joked and told her to tell me that there were already too many Walters on the other side. <laughs> Having met Reverend Bev for the first time, she could not know that Walter Dean had been a family name passed on for many generations in our family. And that she was seeing five Walter Deans was amazing as there were exactly five Walters before my father was born in 1919. And he was named Walter Dean Jennings. He lived four more years and crossed over when he was 90. And in my family circle, I now realize that there are now six Walters on the other side. I continue to do this meditation and it has further opened and expanded my thinking and understanding of the universe that we are each a part of. Each time I meditate, I can see more within this circle than the last time I visited. Recently, I saw my spirit guide, the grandfather, appear, and he was standing before me dressed in buckskins with a feathered bonnet upon his head. He spoke to me, and he told me to remember that my family is inclusive of everyone, not just your blood relatives. He waved his arms and he showed me a place in the forest where a deer was drinking from a brook. I could hear the water as it moved over the rocks and I could see fish swimming in the clear water. He told me this place and everything in it was a part of my family. As I opened my senses, I watched as everything seemed to slow down. I found myself in the scene and I was watching it. And when there was no reaction from the deer that I was present, I realized I was there, but not in the physical. At first I noticed the water and how inviting it was. It was clear and I bent over and scooped some of it into my hand. As I drank, the water tasted so pure and was cool and refreshing. Then I felt as if I was drawn into the flow of the brook. Not only could I see and taste its beauty, but I could feel and experience how it was connected to everything. I understood how the brook had life and was a vital part of my family. I knew it provided a home for so many and provided a source of drinking water so others could live. I then focused on the deer. She was beautiful and she seemed relaxed as she took a cool drink and then she walked into the forest and disappeared. I understood her role in the family. She was not separate. She was one with all that surrounded her. She contributes to the whole and takes what she needs from her family to exist in this beautiful place. And in return, she gives back to the family that she is a vital part of. The fish were swimming in, in the brook near a rock, staying in the shade and feeding upon the insects that had landed upon the water's surface. I could understand the fish's role and the role of the insect as they both contributed to this family in this beautiful place. I then noticed the warmth of the sun and felt its presence and could understand the role that that played also. I could see her rays of light touching everything it came into contact. And amongst the flowers and the plants, I could see movements as the elementals went about their work contributing to this family and showing how they are a vital part of the world we live in. This reminded me of my granddaughter Taylor and how we used to build fairy houses in her backyard underneath a very large and old tree. 
We recently talked about this, and yes, at 16, she still remembers seeing the elementals as they visit her here in her room at night before she went to sleep. And she tells me she can still close her eyes and see them. Grandfather reappeared, and he stooped down, and he held some of the soil in his hands. He told me, I'm showing you this place so that you will understand how we are all connected and that your family within the circle is inclusive of all living beings. The animals, the fish, the water, the sun, the moon, the wind, and the earth we walk upon. We are reliant upon each other and all life contributes to the well-being of the family. Grandfather smiled at me and said, remember. Then he smiled again and disappeared. Remember, he said. This word is so powerful. I love to read Neil Donald Walsh, and he wrote about this extensively, and he wrote, stay in touch with who you are. Remember that you are not your body, but a soul traveling with the body on a journey to joy. Each of us forget who we truly are, and this is not by chance, but rather by design. My guide, the grandfather, did not give me the answers to remembering. Rather, when he smiled, he wanted me to remember and rediscover my true self. When I meditate with my circle, my understanding that the entire universe is connected is made stronger. Each of us is part of this wonderful world that our Creator has made for us. When we incarnate, we are given a limited view and memory as to how we are all part of the whole. This is how we experience, and it allows our souls an opportunity to learn and become closer to our true selves, which is simply love. As we experience life here, we do not see how every thought and action that we take affects the whole. Through our thoughts, we are constantly changing ourselves. And more importantly, remember, we are changing the universe that we live in. I want to share with you next an experience that I had in mid-June before my grandson Nolan was born. As I have done in the past, before my grandchildren were born, I light a candle and ask the soul who embodies my grandchild to speak to me and to give me their thoughts as to why they are coming. I quieted myself and I listened to the voice within me and asked if this soul was willing to speak. I felt a warmth come over me that was comforting and then I heard a voice say he was hoping I would ask. So I began to ask him some questions. At first I asked him, how do you feel about coming into this life? He told me he was a little scared. I know it's going to be a difficult birth, but I am determined to reincarnate at this time. What, and I asked him, what is it that's making you fear? My last lifetime was very difficult, and the effects of that life are holding me back. I have been imprinted with these memories, and that is why I must come again to experience life in your plane to gain understanding and wisdom. I asked him what was the difficulty. I had a lifetime where everything was an obstacle when I was born. I was born with disabilities and chose parents who struggled with this and was placed in a home where I was given only the basic needs. I asked him when this was. In the 1700s, as you would call it, but remember, it's all one life, one continuous circle. Then I asked him why he chose to embody at this time. And he said, it's time to continue my experience on the earth plane where there is so much to learn that will help me grow. Your world is experiencing great strides in overcoming the premise that you are separate. I want to be part of the change and to help others understand that we are truly one 
and that we are truly connected with each other. He then went on to tell me why he chose his parents, Jamie and Jeff Church. Jamie is my daughter. He said, I will need stability, and most importantly, the love that they will give me. This will be a welcome change for my last lifetime. My new parents, I know, will give me unconditional love and a family that is strong and bonded together. My choice is not only about them, but also about the entire family. Your family is strong and very loving and accepting of one another. This family understands that each one of them is a part of the circle, and each experience is the experience of the whole. I am very excited to begin to be part of that circle and overcoming my fears, so be patient with me. He says he'd look forward to Jamie and Jeff holding him in his arms. When this happens, I know that my fears will go away. And as we bond and our energies come together in unconditional love, he went on to tell me that he wants his brothers to know that he's anxious to join them and becoming a part of their lives. The love we will have as brothers will be cherished. He told me to tell Xander that I'm going to like the things he likes. I'll be looking for him to follow and to be the leader and watch over me. Gavin, we will be closer in age and we will have great times together. Although we may compete at times, our love for one another will be strong and connected. That is all I have for now. I must prepare myself to meet you, he told me. I love you and thank you for this opportunity to connect to you, my grandfather, and I ask that you share this with everyone. So I have. This was an incredible experience to have, and a very emotional experience also to have this happen, and I've done this with some of my other grandchildren also. Uh, not all of them have come through. But if not for the daily practice of meditation and going within to connect to the Christ consciousness we are all a part of, I would never have had this opportunity. When I look at what this beautiful soul shared with me, his message resonates within me. There is a reason each of us chose to have the life that we are leading. Our past lives and what Nolan called the imprinted memories are real. And within each of us, we are all striving for understanding and wisdom. It is through this understanding that we can better understand our own lives. Your past lives directly affect so much of your daily experience. Your relationships, your health, your habits, and yes, your belief systems. Nolan spoke about why he chose his parents. As a soul, he could have chosen many different parents. For example, he could have embodied in the Sudan, where there is so much turmoil and a daily struggle to survive. He chose, based on his past life, to come into this world with my daughter and son-in-law to provide him a loving and stable home. He also chose to be part of a strong family unit and wanted to come into this, into this world to overcome what he says is the concept of being separate. Nolan wants to experience the oneness of life. To me, the most revealing comment he made is when I asked when his past life was, and he told me to remember it's all one life, a continuous circle. Remember. I've also found when I meditate in the circle that I began to understand the movement I was watching as it changed shape and fluctuated. This movement is the constant flow of changes of the thoughts and experience of the whole were in constant motion. My circle is always in a state of growth. And for example, when I take time to notice a beautiful flower and I smell a fragrance, this experience becomes the experience of everyone in the family, whether they know it or not. 
When I feel sad or I'm feeling joy, the circle sends a message to each of us so we will know the sadness and the joy that the other is having through our connectedness and through the oneness of life. Within the circle and within your circle, all of my memories and all of the lifetimes I have had and have lived before or the lives that I may be living now as our, capable, as our soul is capable of incarnating in different carnations at once. As always when I meditate, I witness different scenes and replay memories that I have. I've seen replayed in this circle the moment I was in a lake sinking to the bottom and an unknown presence pushed me to the surface when I was a young child. I've seen myself transition and return home within the circle and have felt the joy of this experience. From this I have lost the fear of dying and be given an understanding that death does not exist. It also brings to mind my soul family, which I also see in my circle. And the connectiveness we have and when we're, when we're coming into an incarnation here, how we make choices and how our soul family comes into our lives at different times. And with this, I see the faces of my dear and special granddaughters. As grandfather said, they are not of my bloodline, but rather are a true gift from Creator. I met them at my neighbor's cookout many years ago, and we discovered we were at Disney World staying together at the same resort on the same days just the week before. I often think back on how I must have seen them. I'm sure I not, would not have not noticed these two beautiful, two beautiful little blonde-headed girls. It was amazing as we immediately connected and soon fell deeply in love. It has taken me time to understand completely, but through meditation I discovered a strong and, emo strong and emotional tie with not only them but also with their mother. And it is through a past life that we all had together that shaped the relationship that we are having now. Their dad is also a major player in this experience. And through this, my family circle has grown. They are all very important to me and the testament to the strength of the circle and how we are all connected and how spirit moves and brings us together. I am truly blessed. The people I experience in my circle of family represent many different belief systems the grandfather and the Native Americans, Christians, Buddhists, and those who choose not to follow any religious or philosophy. I have experienced that the oneness we all share binds us together no matter what our beliefs are. Our church is founded on these principles, and as I look around this room today, I see people who have had their roots in many different religions and yet we are all able to come together. We don't look at the differences. We choose to see the love in everyone and how we are all part of the same family. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the world could come together as we do? When I meditate in my circle, I always see each of you. Your faces appear, I hear your voices, and as I meditate, I find great comfort in knowing that you are my family. This brings about further understanding that we are not individuals coming each Sunday, but rather we are all connected to one another. And as we leave these doors, we do not leave as individuals, but rather we leave in the oneness of life and carry our message of love to everyone that we encounter. The best example that I can give you of this is a recent experience I had this past May. I was taken to the hospital with chest pains and shortness of breath and all the symptoms of a major heart attack. Thank goodness it was not my heart, but I discovered that your esophagus can go into spasms and mimic a heart attack. 
After being rushed into a cubicle and being connected to monitors and IVs and EKGs, obviously I was more than a little extremely stressed. As I laid there, I told myself to calm down and take a moment. I closed my eyes and began to follow my breath. As I did, I thought of my family, in particular my grandchildren, saying to myself that I had so much to share with them and every, every reason to live life to its fullest. Through the struggle, suddenly I felt a calmness come over me, and I heard voices. These voices were of Cynthia and Sarah taking me into the meadow to ascend up the mountain to my temple. I listened to their every move as they, as they brought me from one terrace to another, and I found myself feeling safe and secure. It is a moment that I will never forget, and a moment that will always be imprinted on my soul's journey. I thank both of you. So as you leave today, remember we are all connected. We are family, and we continue to touch each other's lives through our thoughts, through our dreams, and through our soul's unending journey. I encourage each of you to try what I have done. Take a moment and meditate about family, and it is my hope that my experience becomes your experience, and it will help you find the peace and love that our Creator wants for each of you. Paul Solomon said that we must build a family so bonded to one another that the bonds even exceed those of blood bonds. And in bonding in such a way, individuals committed to love and peace as a higher power can bring harmony to this planet. He went on to say, continue your work, the building of a worldwide family that love is an energy, a vital force. It is the essence of life itself, the building block of matter. It is light and no darkness can stand against it. He continues by saying our fellowship is an extended family of those sharing a recognition of God as living love. Paul says we come together from many different faiths to worship and love and understanding. I, we, I believe that we are fulfilling Paul's dream by committing ourselves to love and bringing about peace and harmony to everyone we meet in our circle of family. Today, it's my hope that by sharing with some of my experiences and thoughts that maybe you've come to understand yourselves a little bit better, that you will come to know that my experiences are your experiences. By closing your eyes and envisioning your own circle of family, I hope you're able to see my face smiling at you and you are better able to comprehend the Christ consciousness that we are all a part of and connected to. Remember, we are one. You are inside of me. Every step I take, you're there. Every breath I breathe, we share. Thank you.